What's up guys, today I'm gonna to teach you guys 10 easy music video effects that you can make in Premiere Pro in under 10 minutes, or at least we'll try. My name is Devin Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned, today I'm gonna to teach you guys 10 easy effects and transitions that you can use in Premiere Pro, absolutely for free, no plugins at all required. Just as a heads up, we are gonna be using some presets from the 11%.net store. They're not absolutely mandatory, but they'll definitely help spice up your effects and just make the overall look look a lot better. I really dump out my heart and soul into creating preset packs that will just really help speed up your editing workflow. At our store, we have preset packs ranging from title card presets all the way to Lightroom presets. It's absolutely insane the amount of sauce we spill there, so definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. And if you use this promo code, you can get an exclusive 40% off any of your first purchases. Definitely make sure to check out the link in the description. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. All right, guys. So now that we're finally inside of Premiere Pro, one of the first effects that we are going to do is the flash photo effect transition. There is a prerequisite. You have to take a bunch of flash photos while you're on set, or you can grab a bunch of screenshots from a bunch of freeze frames. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import all of these flash photos. It's important that you have a bunch of these. We're going to select all of them. We're going to right click and then we're going to hit speed duration and then we're going to set this duration delete this five and let's set this to about three and now what we're going to do is we are going to hit sequence close gap and now you'll see that all the photos have immediately snapped together and you can see if we play this out we have a nice quick flash through effect now it's time of course to go ahead and add some flash to this to do this we're going to go ahead and hit this little new item icon we're going to hit adjustment layer and then hit okay let's drag this adjustment layer on top of our photos drag it to the width of three frames and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to select my lumetri color basic color correction and just crank up the exposure of the adjustment layer then I'm gonna set this opacity at 100% at the very beginning, and then I'm gonna set it to zero at the very end. Play that out, you see we have a nice initial flash. We're gonna go ahead and just repeat this flash for just all of our frames by holding Alt or Option if you're on Mac or PC. Just delete some random flashes just so it doesn't become too strobey. Go ahead and place this through any video footage and boom, there you go, you have a nice flash photo transition. Our next effect is going to be the zoom in effect. Now this effect, you're gonna need two clips basically. And once again, go ahead and drag another adjustment layer over your clips. And we're just going to decrease this to about a couple frames, maybe 10 or 20 frames. We're first going to apply a transform effect to this. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to hit a keyframe at the scale at the very beginning of 100. And then at the very end of this adjustment layer, we're just gonna zoom in like a crap ton. And we're just gonna move these keyframes like very close together. I'm gonna hit the drop down on the scale key icon and I'm just going to use this anchor point and drag it down and a little bit forward. So that way we have this like very ramped up zoom in effect. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the shutter angle to about like 40 or 50. Then I'm going to hold option or alt to duplicate this layer. And then I'm simply going to mess around with these keyframes over here, drag out the opposite end keyframe and move these keyframes a little bit closer together. I'm gonna trim down our adjustment layer so that it starts on the first keyframe and I'm just going to drag it to the middle of the clip starts and boom, there we go. We have a nice zoom in effect. The only thing is this clip right here is now really, really, really zoomed in. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to decrease the scale a bunch to where it just fits normally. I'm going to search for the replicate effect and let's go ahead and just drag this right here, boom, to our clip. Change the count to three and I'm just going to zoom in to where it fits perfectly right here at the end of the zoom in effect. And now if we play this out, you can see we have, we've just filled in all that extra space. The only thing is you're just gonna wanna make sure that your new adjustment layer covers the whole new clip so that it stays perfectly in frame. And boom, there we go. We have a nice quick zoom in effect. Moving on to our next effect is the spin effect. Now the spin effect is very similar to the zoom effect. We're gonna go ahead and use the same zoom effect template that we just used. We're instead, this time we're just going to turn off the keyframes for our scales and scale in on both of our adjustments layers. Once you deleted all the scale in keyframes on our top two transition layers, we're gonna go ahead and once again, apply a replicate effect, set it to three. And once we have both clips applied with a nice replicate layer effect, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to use the keyframes on the scale animation. I'm gonna go ahead and just scale in our frames with the adjustment layer transform values. So we're just gonna go ahead and scale in nicely with the adjustment layers. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add some rotation keyframes by simply clicking the rotation icon 
one, moving a couple frames towards the end and then just increasing that rotation to something like, let's do like 40. I'm gonna use the Bezier anchor keyframe to create a nice smooth animation to it. And then we're just gonna do the same to the opposite side. So I'm just going to set a standard rotation keyframe at zero and then I'm just going to decrease it to about like negative 37. And then that way, once we play it out, we have this nice spin effect. Next transition, I really, really love this one. This one is just a simple film burn. These ones are super easy to create. You can just go ahead and just literally grab overlay transitions off of YouTube. I have this one, I'll link below in the description. Shout out to their channel. You can go ahead, download the YouTube video, simply drag it on, and then I'm gonna change the blending mode to linear dodge add. Then we can just go ahead and apply this over two scenes and boom, there we go. We have a nice film burn transition overlay. The next effect is going to be an animated whole zoom through effect. Now this one is a really, really fun one because you can really create seamless transitions. So what I'm gonna simply do is I'm going to create a circular ellipse mask. I'm going to invert it. Then I'm just gonna use this circle mask right here and just create a nice mask that matches one of these holes from this scene right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold option or alt to duplicate our first layer. And then I'm going to delete the mask on our first layer. I'm gonna set a keyframe on our opacity and then set it to zero a couple frames in. So that way it just kind of like fades in. And now what you're gonna do is make sure you have a clip placed directly below both of our layers. And I'm going to create a keyframe on our scale position and rotation. And then let's just go ahead and add some animation and zoom in through this hole that we just created right here. Now we can just go ahead, select all these keyframes, right click them, and then just select the Bezier keyframe so it just feels a little bit more natural. And boom, there we go, we have a nice zoom through keyframe effect. Moving on to the next transition effect, this is a fun one using 3D elements from YouTube. Now, this is really cool because there are so many countless 3D assets on YouTube and you can simply just download them off the internet. Make sure to check for the artist's terms and agreements. What I'm simply gonna do is use an ultra key effect right here in my effects drag this onto our 3D element and then just simply select the green and voila, now we have an isolated spinning Mario shell. Now these are really, really cool because you can simply just add any type of animation you want to this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set some nice keyframes throughout the scene and let's just go ahead and move it from here to there and voila, there we have some nice 3D elements that we can add to our scene. You can of course, obviously just go ahead and duplicate it as many times as you want, changing the direction, scale, size, and animation, all that good stuff. And voila, there we go, we have some nice animations. Moving on to our next transition is going to be another masking effect. Now this one's really cool because it once again creates seamless transitions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use our pen tool once again and I'm just going to create a nice, simple, very subtle mask around our frame. I'm going to increase the feathering and now what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the keyframe icon on our animation for our mask. And then what I'm gonna do is as this little like glass case moves down, I'm simply going to move the mask down with it. Obviously go ahead throughout your frame and just adjust to the scene. So that way once we play it out, we have this nice transition effect. And what I'm gonna simply do now is I'm going to drag a new shot over this. It looks pretty cool. Obviously the better objects that you have in frame, you know, the better transitions you can create, but it's just another way to add simple seamless transitions. Next up is going to be the paint asset overlay transition effect. Now this one, I really love this one. Shout out to my man Creative Flow for creating this awesome epic paint texture pack. Now this is a really cool effect pack. It's completely for free on his website. I don't know how much longer it'll be for free, but definitely make sure to just go check out his website, please. It's really cool. It comes with a bunch of cool paint overlay effects. What we're simply gonna do is we're going to search up the Luma effect, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this right here, and voila, there we go. Now we have isolated all the paint textures. I'm going to right click and copy this, and then just go ahead and paste it to all of these paint layers right here. And now we have a bunch of cool paint textures that we can just go ahead and overlay. Now this one's really fun because you really just can have the power to go in and just add as much animation and customization to this effect as you want. The better animations that you create, you can go ahead and create better transitions as well. Just keep messing around with the animation and position. You can go ahead and really create some cool effects. Our next transition is going to be another overlay once again. I really love the smashing glass effect animation. This one's really fun and really crazy. We're gonna go ahead and download this one on YouTube. Shout out to this channel right here. They provided this asset for free and it's really, really good. We're gonna go ahead and set the blending mode to linear dodge add. And now the key is that you want this glass effect to happen right after something very, very like fast and intense occurs. So I'm gonna use this right after they use their own flash photo effect transition right here. And boom, there we go. We have some nice glass. It just makes things really feel cool. Lastly, moving on to the final transition effect, the final one, the best transition out of all 10 effects, 
the flash transition effect. Bruh. Yep, that's it. This is this one is really the goat. You're gonna go ahead and create another adjustment layer. We're just gonna go ahead and drag it down to the length in between both of our clips. We're gonna go ahead to our Lumetri color, basic color correction, increase the exposure like a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to set some keyframes. So let's set an opacity to 100 at the very middle. And then I'm gonna set it to zero at the end. Hold option or all if you're on PC, drag that zero keyframe to the other end and boom, there we go. We have a nice flash transition. It's just another way to just go ahead and spice up your footage so that it's not super blank and boring. And with that guys, those are our final 10 transitions in under 10 minutes. Here are the final results. If you guys made it to the end of the video, thank you again so much for watching. If you found any of this video interesting, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe if you found it helpful. And once again, really, if you have any spare time in your day, please make sure to check out 11percent.net. I really pour out my heart and soul into creating Premiere Pro and After Effects presets that will just help speed up your editing workflow and just allow you to create cooler music video effects and also hopefully allow you to raise your prices. We just dropped our Shake It Up preset pack. In that pack, we have a bunch of crazy artificial camera movements that you can literally just drag and drop to your footage. All the presets set packs are super easy to use and if you use this promo code you can get an exclusive 40 percent off any of your first purchases definitely make sure to check out the link description once again thanks so much for watching we'll see you guys in the next video peace